Hello everyone. It's an honor to be standing here today to receive the William Carter Award. I'd like to take this time to first thank everyone who is involved in helping this work reach this stage today, and second, to review the contributions that are being recognized here by the community at large. I'd like to start off by saying that I'm honored to be a recipient of the William Carter Award. So this work joins a long line of dissertations that are being recognized in William Carter's legacy. And this award means a lot to me because it reinforces the current and future value of this work that we've spent many years in developing and polishing. And it really hits home that this work is meaningful, both inside and outside the memory reliability community. So as a recipient of this award, I'm proud to continue in the direction William Carter set with his foundational work in dependability and to honor his legacy in the best way that I can. Next, I would like to thank all of the wonderful people who helped make this work possible, whether directly or indirectly. And so first, I'd like to start off with my PhD advisor, Owner Mutlu, who nominated me for this award. So Owner supervised me all throughout my PhD, starting off at CMU and then moving over to ETH Zurich. All the while, Owner has been nudging me in a better direction through a combination of his personal guidance and by creating opportunities that otherwise would not have been there for me. I'm certain that Owner has helped me in many more ways than just what met my eye as his PhD student, and I'm grateful for his mentorship across all these years. Next, I would like to acknowledge my defense committee and letter writers who reviewed and endorsed this work. These experts helped shape this work to its ultimate form, which is now out there for everybody to see and build upon. Next, I would like to thank the award organizers, including IEEE and IFIP, the conference chairs, and the members of the award selection committee. This award exists because of the efforts of these people and organizations, and I'm grateful for their time and energy. Finally, I'd like to thank my friends, colleagues, mentors, and family. And I'm very grateful for the support, advice, and companionship that they provided throughout my PhD, and all of the different ways that they helped bring me to this stage today. Next, I would like to briefly introduce myself before jumping into my PhD contributions. So I'm originally from Houston, Texas, and I did my bachelor's at UT Austin in the class of 2015. Then I started out my PhD with Owner, initially at CMU in 2015, and then moving over to ETH Zurich shortly thereafter. I recently defended and graduated with my work focused on memory systems reliability. And currently I'm exploring options for what comes next. And I'm broadly interested in computer architecture and systems topics, including things like design, analysis, and modeling, and so forth. And as of right now, I'm thinking about work in industry research, but we'll see where that takes me in the longer run. So now that I've provided a bit of background about myself and the others who contributed to this work, I will give a brief overview of my dissertation and its contributions. So the title of this dissertation is Enabling Effective Error Mitigation in Modern Memory Chips that Use on DIECC. And this dissertation was recently deposited at ETH a couple of months ago. So let's start out with a look at a conventional computing system. And so here we have a processor that operates on data and main memory that stores data. Now in this talk, we're going to focus primarily on DRAM or dynamic random access memory, which is widely used throughout modern computing systems. Now these two components are connected by a standardized interface that allows interoperability between processors and main memory that are produced by separate manufacturers. And this interface also provides a separation of concerns between the two manufacturers, allowing each of the groups to focus on their respective design challenges. Now a key design challenge in modern systems is that DRAM is fundamentally susceptible to various different error mechanisms, and these errors can lead to data loss or system failure if they're ignored. To make matters worse, DRAM manufacturers' primary goal across different technology generations is typically to improve storage density, but this actually exacerbates errors over time. And this both increases costs for manufacturers and consumers alike, and it limits the system's overall potential for growth. To address these issues, manufacturers typically use error mitigation techniques, which fix errors before they're able to impact the system. And so an error mitigation mechanism essentially takes in erroneous data and outputs the corrected data. So most recently, DRAM manufacturers have begun to incorporate on-die error correction, or on-die ECC, within their DRAM chips. And so here we show an erroneous DRAM module. And on-die ECC operates entirely within the DRAM device, and it's proprietary and self-contained. And therefore, Onda ECC operates in a way that's completely invisible to the processor. And in doing so, Onda ECC hides the most common errors that occur from the processor. For example, random single bit errors that are prevalent amongst the memory technology. Now, Onda ECC is a popular solution for several different reasons. First, it is simple and low cost. Second, it preserves trade secrets that DRAM manufacturers typically do not want to reveal. For example, how exactly the manufacturers are addressing these errors. And third, Onda ECC is convenient for many commodity systems because it simply works. However, Onda ECC also has several downsides. 
First, it is only capable of correcting a limited number of errors. And this is because addressing all possible errors exclusively within the DRAM chip is extremely expensive. And second, as a result of this limited error correction capability, Onda ECC complicates system level design and test efforts. Now these downsides lead me to the key problem that we address in this work, which I can state as follows. The modern DRAM uses Onda ECC, which negatively impacts system level design and test efforts. And this is because Onda ECC takes predictable and or well understood errors that occur due to physical processes and passes them through an unknown filtration due to partial correction, effectively resulting in unpredictable and obfuscated errors that are difficult to understand or reason about. Now let's take a look at some of the parties who are impacted by this obfuscation. And in general, this can include anyone who needs to understand memory error characteristics throughout the course of their work. And three concrete examples include, first, error mitigation designers who are forced to make limiting assumptions. For example, assuming the worst case behavior that can result due to Onda ECC, and this can lead to inefficient designs. Second, third-party testers who find it difficult to debug observed errors because Onda ECC conceals the underlying root causes of those errors. And third, research scientists who perform experimental studies to better understand DRM technology characteristics find that their studies can be polluted by artifacts from Onda ECC. And to address this problem, my thesis statement is as follows. So we can use new memory testing techniques to recover the error characteristics that Onda ECC obfuscates, and we can do so by exploiting the interaction between Onda ECC and the statistical characteristics of memory errors, thereby enabling scientists and engineers to make more informed decisions towards building robust systems. So here's a quick picture of the full thesis statement taken verbatim from the thesis, which expresses the same content in paragraph form. So now I will put the core thesis contributions into the context of the different parts of the system that they address. And so here's a high-level diagram showing a DRAM chip that uses Onda ECC. Now the Onda ECC logic interposes between the processor and the data store. So our first contribution is Reaper, which focuses on the rightmost side of this figure within the data store itself. And so this work seeks to understand the basic data retention error characteristics of the DRAM chip. Our second contribution is Ion, which focuses on the interface between the Onda ECC logic and the data store, where the error characteristics are hidden by Onda ECC, but they are not affected by Onda ECC. And so this work uses statistical inference to recover those characteristics, despite the processor not being able to directly observe them. Our third contribution is Beer, which focuses on the Onda ECC logic itself. And so this work develops a testing technique to determine exactly how the Onda ECC logic works, which essentially describes exactly how Onda ECC obfuscates errors. Our fourth contribution is HARP, which focuses on how errors appear to the processor. And so this work develops techniques for efficiently identifying those bits that are at risk of error, even though Onda ECC complicates this process. And our final contribution is a set of recommendations that we have based on the work we've done throughout contributions one through four. And so this work targets the interface between the processor and the memory device, essentially arguing that um, the transparency of DRM reliability characteristics is essential for consumers to better understand and adapt the memory device to the needs of their particular system. So I'll start by discussing our first contribution, Reaper. So here we have a DRM cell that stores one bit of data using a storage capacitor, and an access transistor is used to read from and write to the cell. Now the storage capacitor can use, of one, can use one of two different data encodings. So depending on the particular circuit design of a DRAM chip, a charge capacitor can represent either a 1 or a 0, and the discharge capacitor then represents the opposite value. Now unfortunately, DRAM cells leak charge over time. And so here I show a timeline of a single cell that starts out in the fully charged state. So over time, the charge slowly leaks, eventually resulting in a charge level that can no longer be resolved as a 1 or a 0, and we refer to this as a data retention error. Now to prevent data retention errors, we use a process known as DRAM refresh which periodically restores the charge of all DRAM cells in the storage array. Now, unfortunately, DRAM refresh incurs significant performance and energy overhead. To make DRAM refresh more efficient, it's well understood that only a few DRAM cells actually require frequent refreshing. And so here I show a DRAM module whose individual chips comprise arrays of DRAM cells. Now, these cells all have different charge capacities and leakage rates because of manufacturing imperfections. And so the cells that I show in red are fast leaking, and the green cells are slow leaking. Now, unfortunately, the fast leaking cells are difficult to identify due to various technology-specific phenomena. And our goal in this work is to quickly and identify, excuse me, quickly and efficiently identify which cells are error-prone and which cells are not. So to this end, we perform the first extensive characterization of real LPDDR4 DRAM chips, and we make two major observations. 
First, we find that cells are more likely to fail at an increased refresh interval or temperature. And second, we identify a complex trade-off space surrounding error profiling, and we characterize this space in terms of three different metrics. First, uh, profiling speed, second, error coverage, and third, false positive rate. Using what we learned from our study, we then introduce reach profiling, which profiles for errors not at the desired operating conditions, but rather at reach conditions where cells are more likely to fail. And we find that this improves both profiling speed and reliability at a cost of identifying some false positives. In our evaluations, we show that reach profiling is significantly faster than the state-of-the-art baseline for achieving reasonable coverage and false positive rates. And we find that we can push the speed up even further at the cost of identifying more false positives. And second, we show that reach profiling enables operation at longer refresh intervals by reducing the profiling overhead. And as an example result, reach profiling enables over 16% end-to-end -end system performance improvement and over 36% during power reduction due to operation at reduced refresh rates. Here's a screenshot of our write-up for this work. So now I'm going to discuss our second contribution, EIN. So here we have the three parties that we discussed earlier in this talk. These groups all study DRM errors in order to understand a DRM chip's reliability characteristics. And these characteristics can include things like expected error rates, the locations of weak cells within the storage array, and so forth as shown on the slide. And the goal of this process is to gain exploitable insights to improve performance, reliability, and so forth. Unfortunately, on the ICC interferes with studying errors. And so let's take a closer look at why. So now suppose we run the same test routine on two different sets of DRM chips three DRAM chips without ONDA ECC, and three with ONDA ECC. Now, when testing the chips without ONDA ECC, we obtain well-understood error distributions that are based on physical properties of the DRAM technology, and therefore these distributions are easy to reason about and understand. In contrast, the DRAM chips with ONDA ECC yield unpredictable error distributions that are dependent on the particular ECC implementation of a given DRAM chip, and therefore they're difficult to reason about and predict. Now, our goal in this work is to recover the error characteristics, error characteristics that ONDA ECC obfuscates. Our key idea is to approach this problem with statistical inference. And so here I show a typical system that uses ONDA ECC. Now, the information at the side of the CPU is known because the CPU can directly observe it. The information at the side of the data store is unknown, but is predictable based on well-understood DRM error mechanisms. And so using a combination of these two, we can infer what happens within both the ONDA ECC logic and the error-prone data store using statistical methods. And so we introduce a concrete four-step testing methodology called EIN. And so first, we define an experimental setup to induce data retention errors. Second, we simulate the results of the experiment over various suspected ECC schemes. And to facilitate these simulations, we introduce an open source tool called EINSIM. Third, we run the same experiment on a real chip that uses an unknown ECC scheme. And fourth, we perform inference using a technique called map estimation, which yields the most likely ECC scheme suspected in step two, given the experimental results that we obtained from step three. Now we evaluate EIN using real LPDDR4 DRAM chips, and we show that EIN is capable of inferring both the ONDA ECC scheme and the raw bit error rate within the data store, all without requiring visibility into the ECC mechanism, without disabling ECC, or without tampering with the hardware in any way. And so here's a screenshot of our write-up for this work and the open source tool EINSIM that we released throughout the work. Now I will discuss our third contribution, BEER. So our goal in this work is to determine exactly how ONDA ECC obfuscates errors. In other words, determine its exact parity check matrix. And in the context of a real DRM chip, this means that we want to know exactly what happens within the ECC logic, because this would both reveal exactly how ONDA ECC scrambles errors and allow us to infer Robit error locations. And to achieve both of these, we introduced two new testing methodologies called BEER and BEEP respectively. Now, both BEER and BEEP are based on the key idea that disabling DRAM refresh induces data retention errors only in charged cells. So here we illustrate the two different states that a DRAM cell can be in. On the left, the cell storage capacitor is charged, and on the right, it's discharged. So now when we induce data retention errors, we can cause a charged cell to discharge, but an already discharged cell typically will not flip to the charged state. And this means that we can selectively induce errors in different bits by controlling their bit flip directions. And so using this principle, we develop BEER, which is a new three-step testing methodology that first induces uncorrectable data retention errors by disabling DRAM refresh operations. Second, identifies which uncorrectable errors are and are not possible for a given DRAM chip. And finally, solves for the parity check matrix of the ONDA ECC logic using a SAT solver. 
Now, when using beer in practice, we find that beer determines the parity check matrix without hardware support or tools, without prior knowledge about ONDA ECC, and without access to ECC metadata, for example, the error syndromes that it internally generates. And finally, we open source beer as a project on, at, on GitHub at the link shown on the slide. So we evaluate beer in two different ways. First, through an experimental demonstration using real LPDDR4 DRAM chips, and second, in simulation to show beer's correctness and practicality for various representative Vonda ECC codes. And we find that different manufacturers appear to use different parity check matrices, whereas chips of the same model number appear to use the same parity check matrix. And our simulations show that beer works for all simulated test cases and is practical in terms of both runtime and memory usage. And so here's a screenshot of the beer paper and our open source tool, beer. Now let's take a look at HARP, which examines how errors appear to the processor outside of the DRAM chip. So now we circle back to the topic of error profiling. And so here's a diagram showing how a profiler might talk to an unreliable memory chip that uses on ECC. Now, given erroneous bits within the data store, the profiler essentially asks the question, which bits are at risk of error? And unfortunately, on ECC changes how these errors appear to the processor. So our goal in this work is to understand and address any challenges that on ECC introduces for error profiling. So to this end, we study how on ECC affects profiling, and we identify three key challenges that on ECC introduces. First, on ECC exponentially increases the number of at-risk bits that the profiler needs to identify. Second, on ECC makes each individual at-risk bit harder to identify. And third, on ECC interferes with commonly used data patterns for memory testing. Now to overcome these three challenges, we observe that there are two different sources of errors in a memory chip that uses on ECC. I'll use this simple diagram here as a visual aid to illustrate these two types of errors. And so here we're showing a hypothetical 4-bit error pattern before and after on ECC correction. Now the first type of error is shown in blue, and it's what we call a direct error. And this occurs because of errors within the storage array itself. The second type of error shown in green is what we call an indirect error. And this occurs as an artifact of the on ECC algorithm. And in particular, we observe that the number of indirect errors that occur simultaneously is upper bounded by the ECC algorithm itself. So in other words, a single error correcting code can only cause one indirect error at a time. And so based on these observations, our key idea is to decouple the process of identifying direct and indirect errors. So to this end, we introduce HARP, which implements this key idea to create a two-phase profiling algorithm. First, during active profiling, HARP uses an on ECC bypass path, shown in the figure as a dashed orange line, to quickly identify all bits that are at risk of direct errors, making use of existing profiling techniques. And second, HARP safely identifies all bits that are at risk of indirect errors using a secondary ECC that is at least as strong as on ECC. And by separating profiling into two different phases, HARP effectively reduces the problem of profiling memory chips that use on ECC into the problem of profiling memory chips that do not use on ECC. Now, in our evaluations, we show that HARP improves profiling coverage and performance relative to two state of the art baseline profiling algorithms. And we show that HARP also outperforms the best performing baseline in a case study of using a repair mechanism to mitigate data retention errors. And so from our evaluations, we conclude that HARP effectively overcomes the three profiling challenges that I mentioned earlier. Here's a screenshot of the HARP paper, which has been fully artifact evaluated, and the artifacts themselves. So finally, I will talk about our general recommendations for DRM transparency going forward. So prior works have shown that there are many different ways to exploit commodity DRAM to improve the system. And so here I show a typical system comprising software, a processor, and DRAM. Now, optimizing for commodity DRAM means implementing optimizations within the software and processor such that these optimizations are usable with unmodified off-the-shelf commodity DRAM chips. And there are many examples of such optimizations in the literature, such as reducing timing voltage margins, implementing system-level error mitigation mechanisms, and even using security enhancements to defend against attacks such as Rohammer. Now, all of these optimizations essentially help adapt a commodity DRAM chip to system-specific goals, such as cost, security, reliability, and so forth. Now, unfortunately, we find that adopting these proposals typically relies on unavailable information about DRAM reliability characteristics. And these characteristics can include things like basic chip design properties, um, testing best practices, and the behavior of errors under different operating conditions. Now, let's take a closer look at the source of this problem. So commodity DRAM specifications typically do not address general reliability characteristics by design. And so here I refer back to the separation of concerns that I mentioned at the beginning of this talk. So this separation of concerns is a long-standing thing, and it essentially defines the goals of the DRAM industry. And in particular, 
Commodity DRAM is designed for a fixed cost optimized operating point, and any efforts to change that operating point somehow go counter to the specifications. However, the opportunity cost of preserving the status quo is increasing today as technology scaling exacerbates problems such as refresh and row hammer, and many old and new proposals to leverage this growing opportunity are looking better and better in today's light. Therefore, our proposal in this work is to re revisit DRM specifications in order to improve information transparency. As for how to release this information, we propose a two-step plan. And we believe there is no need to change DRM hardware or design practices. We would simply like system designers to have the information that they need to make informed decisions and to reason about their own designs. So first, in the short term, we ask for the release of basic information. And this can be through a combination of whatever manufacturers feel is practical for them to reveal and potentially a crowdsourced database developed by DRM consumers and re researchers. For example, such a database could include basic design characteristics that can already be reverse engineered with access to appropriate tools. In the long run, we call for revisiting DRM specifications in a way that inherently facilitates transparency. And we believe that this two-step approach is suitable both for devices already in the field and for future devices that have yet to be built. Here's a screenshot of this paper on archive. And so finally, I'd like to recap the talk. And so we've discussed five main contributions in an effort to understand and overcome some of the challenges that on ECC introduces for DRM today. So to recap the thesis statement, we previously said that we can use new memory testing techniques to recover the error characteristics that Onda ECC obfuscates. And we've demonstrated four new techniques to this end. And we've looked at the second part, both in the context of Onda ECC and in a very general sense. Now, we hope and believe that our contributions here will further future work and provide the basis for testing techniques that over, uh, excuse me, testing techniques and designs that overcome the limitations of Onda ECC. And some important directions that we identify are extending the techniques that we propose in this work, making use of the information that our testing techniques reveal, devising alternatives to ONDA ECC, and improving transparency into DRM reliability and operation. Finally, during my PhD, I had the pleasure to work with many people in the Safari Research Group, and we tackled a variety of different problems relating to the memory system, as shown on this slide. And so here, I'd like to acknowledge these works given that they influenced my perspective and thinking and therefore impacted my dissertation. And so this concludes my talk. Thank you again to everyone who helped make this work happen.